Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Randy, and this is the third in my series where I go through each year and tell you my favorite album, my favorite song, my favorite movie, and my favorite TV show with some runners up. And one of the rules is that I have to have a physical copy of my pick, and also for the TV series, they're only eligible for their debut season, even though I will take the run of the series into consideration. And now we're at 1952, now, I, I, heard, I have heard some in the comments say, well, that was before my time. I go, well, it's before my time as well, but you can have an appreciation. So anyway, let's get to it. And my first one is the, my favorite album of 1952. In fact, it's my only album I have from 1952. And that's Penthouse Serenade by Nat King Cole at the Piano. Uh, originally released as a 10 inch, it was expanded in 1955. I have the expanded version, but it has all the songs from the 10 inch version. It's an instrumental album with uh, Nat tinkling the ivories with a jazz quartet, kind of borders on easy listening jazz, but it's nice to see Nat King Cole concentrating solely on the piano. So Nat King Cole, Penthouse Serenade is my pick for album of the year, 1952. Right now for my song of the year, my third runner-up is from the Clovers, and it's the song One Mint Julep. Uh, the song was written by Rudy Toombs, who also wrote One Scotch, One Bourbon, One Beer, which was a hit for Amos Milburn. But, and later, George Thurikud, who changed the order, just like John Lee Hooker's version, to One Bourbon, One Scotch, One Beer. But uh, One Mint Julep, great song about what liquor can do after meeting up with the girl and then her father. So his one mint julep was the cause of it all. He ends up having to get married. But yeah, the Clovers, one mint julep. This is on Edsel Records. I think that's a reissue label out of the UK. All right, my second runner up is by Lloyd Price. And it's the song, Lottie Lottie, Miss Claudie. Uh, this is on the, MCA label, they did these collectibles albums, but yeah, the great Lloyd Price. Uh, it was a number one hit on the R&B charts for seven weeks. It kind of, it features Fats Domino on piano. Uh, the song helped usher in the New Orleans sound, a big influence on rock and roll. In fact, Elvis was a fan and he cut the song later, yeah. Lloyd Price, Lottie Lottie, Miss Claudie. Uh, and my first runner up, from the great Merle Travis. It's a song called A Too Fast Past. It's like they call this guitar rags and a too fast past. Uh, but this is a great uh, collection, box set by Bear Family out of Germany. They have these great booklets and with all the song information, this is a five disc set of Merle Travis. And you'll find it on number 24 here, Too Fast Past. Now it's about, it's, the song's really about hard living. Uh, it means a move too, too fast past, means a slow down future. It was released a, as a 78 and 45, but it didn't chart. But you know, Merle had that unique guitar style called Travis Picking that I'm sure guitarists could explain a lot better than I could. But his best known songs were covered by other artists, such as Tennessee Ernie Ford had a big hit with 16 Tons, Johnny Cash with Dark as a Dungeon. He was really known for the mining songs. In fact, he did a whole album of mining songs called Songs of the Mine, Songs of the Coal Mines. And so he's got a whole album of coal mining songs that he wrote, but uh, it doesn't even include 16 Tons or Dark as a Dungeon. But yeah, Merle Travis. Uh, some of you might know him from in the movie From Here to Eternity. He sings the song Reenlistment Blues in the movie. But yeah, Mer Merle Travis, my number, uh, my first runner-up. And my favorite song of 1952 is from the great Hank Williams, the King Country Music. I'll never get out of this world alive. And this is a twofer with Slim Whitman and Hank Williams. Really, if you can find this, uh, 40 Greatest Hits of Hank Williams. This is the one to have. I wish I had it on vinyl. But yeah, it's, it's got all of his best stuff on here. But yeah, 
I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive, written by Williams and Frank Rose. It was the last single to be, be released uh, when Williams was alive. It's my favorite Hank Williams tune. It has a lot of humor, but it does lead to some serious contemplation. As he says, uh, no matter how I struggle and strive, I'll never get out of this world alive. But I like some of the humor in it, too, because it's like a distant uncle passed away and left me quite a batch. And I was living pretty high until that fateful day. A lawyer proved I wasn't born. I was only hatched. Yeah, great Hank Williams. Now to my favorite film of 1952. Some of the ones that didn't quite make the cuts were the great Anthony Mann Western with James Stewart in Bend of the River. And the great film noir, Kansas City Confidential. Uh, and some may say, well, what about High Noon? Because High Noon's not going to make my list. And I actually don't have that film on DVD. I thought I did. I do have the song, the theme song for the movie, High Noon, by, that was sung by Tex Ritter, Ritter. I thought it was called Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling. But, you know, this, it's called High Noon on here. Yeah, High Noon didn't quite make my cut, and mainly because I don't have it, and I'm not sure that it would have made it anyway. We'll see. But uh, my third runner-up is the movie Five Fingers. Uh, it was directed by Joseph Menkowitz, uh, who also directed out All About Eve. It stars James Mason as this traitorous embassy clerk in love with Polish uh, countess played by Danielle Dario. And it also stars Michael Rennie. I love James Mason's performance. But yeah, Five Fingers is my uh, third runner-up. Second runner-up is the film The Narrow Margin. Uh, this, it's a great film directed by Richard Fleischer, who would go on to helm such movies as 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Fantastic Voyage, and Soylent Green. Most of the movie takes place on a train with Charles McGraw and Marie Windsor. It was remade in 1990 with Gene Hackman and Ann Archer. Not nearly as good. It wasn't terrible. But yeah, this is the best version. And you can't go wrong with a film noir with Marie Windsor. Yeah, narrow margin. My first runner-up is Singing in the Rain. Uh, this is a TCM classic movie musical four-pack. Uh, it's got some, some other great ones on here, too, but yeah. Singing in the Rain, one of, if not the greatest movie musical of all time, directed by Stanley Donnan, and Gene Kelly also gets credit. It takes place at the beginning of the talking era, uh, when talkies were taking over silent movies, and it provides, that, this aspect provides a lot of the comedy in it. Uh, in fact, uh, the star was a silent film star, and she has trouble in the sound era, and Debbie Reynolds kind of is in the background doing the singing and everything. But uh, Gene Kelly's Singing in the Rain sequence is like one of the most famous movie scenes of all time. It was kind of crazy because he had like 103 temperature when he was doing that. And like I said, he also stars Debbie Reynolds, and she said that Gene Kelly was quite the taskmaster in this movie. But yeah. Singing in the Rain, my first runner-up. My favorite movie of 1952. Yes, it's the great John Ford directed The Quiet Man. Now, is this my favorite movie of all time? Well, you can check and find out if you watch uh, Massey's Main Entertainment Channel as we're counting down our 100 favorite movies of all time. We just did uh, 100 to 91 and I think that will debut on Monday, but I'll give you a link to Massey's Main Entertainment channel. And also we've been doing movie content on Rich Strickler's channel where we just counted down, uh, down our 10 favorite movies from 2000 and beyond. So you might wanna check that out too, but I'll, I'll put a link below for those. But anyway, Quiet Man uh, starring John Wayne as a former boxer that comes back to his native Ireland to settle down and he falls for Maureen O'Hara. There is quite a rivalry with O'Hara's brother in this movie played by Victor McLaughlin. It has one of the all-time classic fight scenes. Uh, much of it was shot around Kong in County Mayo, Ireland. And when I went to Ireland, I had to go to Kong to see that area. Some of it was also shot around Ashford Castle, but uh, great, uh, great movie. 
This is one of my favorites. John Wayne's best performance, I think. That or The Searchers, but yeah. The Quiet Man, my favorite film of 1952. Now we get to my favorite television show from 1952. The second runner-up is the series Mr. and Mrs. North. Uh, now, this starred Richard Denny, uh, which some people may know him as the governor from Hawaii Five-0, the original series, and Barbara Britton, who was in quite a few Westerns. But anyway, Denny plays a mystery magazine publisher that fancies himself an amateur detective, and his wife joins in on the fun, often with great comedic results. But uh, now this is a, says volume three, four episodes put out by Alpha Video. And if you know anything about Alpha Video, their transfers are not always the best. In fact, most of the time they're not. And this is no exception, but yeah, I'm glad to have one of them to, to see the series, but it's a fun series, Mr. and Mrs. North. My first runner-up is Death Valley Days. Now this Western featured stories of the American West, often based on true events, uh, starting with host Stanley Andrews, who was called himself the Old Ranger. Later hosts included Ronald Reagan, Robert Taylor, and Dale Robertson. So they had like a different story every week. Uh, yeah. Death Valley Days, my first runner-up. My favorite television show of 1952 is The Great the Adventures of Superman with George Reeves. Yeah, this is a nostalgic pick as I remember seeing this show in syndication on afternoon TV. Like I said, starred George Reeves as Superman with, with this average physique. And you can tell he's jumping off a trampoline as he goes into the air. I mean, it's, a lot of people will see it as hokey now, but it's, I still think it's a lot of fun. Uh, it also starred uh, in the first season with Phyllis Coates played Lois Lane, and she's probably my favorite. In fact, she just passed away last year at the age of 96. I think she was the last surviving member from the television show. She was replaced in the second season by Noel Neal, who was also good, but I still prefer Phyllis Coates. But a great, great uh, television show, The Adventures of Superman. And that are those are my picks for 1952. Uh, if you have your own picks, I would love to see them down there. And I always like to check out new things. And hope everyone's doing well. And everyone take care.